Welcome to Bad Food Blog, and today I don't think I can classify this as bad food. Because today, we're doing these. And they are slow-cooked British beef casserole with rice, red wine, gravy, and mixed vegetables. And it does look amazing. I've got to say, this is one of the few things I've come to cook that I thought, mm-hmm, yeah. And to go with it, I've... Uh, Microwaved a whole bunch of cut up potatoes with some milk and going to microwave those a little bit longer. It's starting to smell really good, getting it down to mashed potato. I'm going to mash that up, uh, sprinkle some cheese on the top and that can go in the oven with these. Now I've had these before and they're really interesting because you think in here there's going to be a plastic tub with a film on top that you peel off and then you're going to have a casserole in there that you need to microwave. These are a little bit different. Let me show you. <clears throat> they are a metal tub, which I think is, mm, you know, it's an aluminium container like you get from a fast food place, not particularly anything special. But you get a bag of slow cooked, which I can only presume has been souffled, you know, like cooked at a, you know, at a French way where they boil it in the bag. So it's all very squishy and scrunchy and it's everything's broken up really well and it's you know it's really good my wife has asked that i do some dumplings with this and after looking at this i think i will do some dumplings and just put them in with it when it goes in the oven now let's read the instructions and see how we cook how we have to cook this particular one before cooking preheat the oven and remove all packaging okay what temperature do we have to put the oven on the oven has to go on 200 degrees centigrade oh 180 for a fan oven Look there, 180 for a fan oven. Should be easy enough. There, and nothing exploded. So, so we need to empty the contents of the bag into the tray, cover with foil, and place on a baking tray on the top shelf of an oven. Doesn't really matter with a fan oven, you want middle of the oven with a fan oven. Uh, for 30 minutes. Oh, okay. And that's it, it just takes 30 minutes. There's no removing the tray or anything. So if I put dumplings in with these, they'll cook along with the sauce. Now, I, may, I make really simple dumplings and they're really, really, really crazily simple. But first what I'm gonna do is get these two ready for cooking before I put the dumplings in. Because we're gonna have mashed potato with it, not just casserole and dumplings. Now let's see if the mashed potato is done because I have microwaved this now for seven minutes. It's sort of four medium potatoes. It's still a bit hard. It's getting there, but still a bit hard. So this is gonna go back in the microwave for another minute. I don't wanna overcook it. When I mash it, I'm gonna sprinkle a little, I'm gonna put some butter in it, put a little bit of cheese on top, and then it's gonna have a nice crispy top. So first things first, I guess we're making as least mess as possible. I've got to empty this bag into this tray. Oh God, this does not look appetizing when you do this. Sorry, I'm just adding sound effects. How was that? I need to get some sort of spoon, I think. Oh yeah, oh, I don't want to touch this with my hands. Oh. And the cat's here, of course, because that smell will have brought her from another room. There we go. Yep, can you hear her? None of this is for you, kitty, okay? If you jump on the table, no. Stay down. Okay, cool. She's staying down. All right, so that's one. Um, I'm going to need a, let's, uh, grab a tissue. I'm going to put the bags on here. I don't want to run off to the bin in the middle of preparing food. Kind of appears to be holding to her lesson and staying back. Here's the other one. Exactly the same thing. What I'm doing here is, oh, I've got some on my top already. I kind of need a spoon to sort of crush this out. I can understand why she's interested. It does kind of look a little bit like cat food at this point, doesn't it? Not saying that as a negative, whoops. Not saying that's negative, just saying this is what modern cat food tends to look like. And I'm imagining it's how they cook those Sheba packages or whatever. 
Well, casserole a la cat food. Oh, God. I, I guess I'm making comparisons here which aren't really fair, but it does, you know. No. And cat food doesn't have rib. No. Yeah, I can understand why she's so interested. Let me move this chair further away. She has her own food there. I think because this tastes so much like the premium cat food, this smells so much like the premium cat food, she's interested in it. I guess it's not really the cat's fault if they're gonna make cat food. No. Okay, we're gonna have to get rid of this chair as well. Yeah, it's not your food, kitty. Open plan houses. No door to keep the cat out of the kitchen. Once we uh, get her sorted with a microchip and prevent her from having kittens, she'll be able to be put outside when I film. But until then, she's not going to. Although I'm still two minds whether to get her done or not, but I don't really want six more cats in the next sort of three or four months. So that's a definite no. Can you put her in the bedroom? She's not going to leave this alone and I want to carry on making the food. Right. There we go. And now dumplings. I'm going to do the most simple dumplings that I know. I don't have any suet at the moment. Which is a shame, they're just going to have to be plain. Nope. No suet. So around 150 grams of flour, that's maybe 175. Equal parts butter. A little bit more. <laughs> right, the bit where I have to get my hands messy when making dumplings. This should make five or six small dumplings. I will have to add some additional water to the casserole to help steam the dumplings. Not too much, maybe 60, 70 milliliters. Because they're going to absorb water as they cook, not give much out. You can make plain dumplings without suet or anything, it just requires a bit more fat. Get in there, that texture and colour is nice. Right, perfect. Right, that's reached the correct consistency. Leave that to settle for a couple of minutes. The fat will continue to move around in the flour. Let's wash my hands. That's why I should wear an apron. I'm getting absolutely covered. Once you spill one thing on your top though, you might as well just give up. So, there we go. Now, not too little and not too much water to make this. Whoops. Put the lid back on that. I got the amount right first time. So this needs to become a dumpling, so it needs a little bit of water in the middle. Now, not too much water. That's probably five or six teaspoons, not much more. You can always put more water in, you can't take any more out. You can always put a touch more flour in, but then you're going to start to ruin the texture of the dumplings. Hey, there we go. Right, 
Now, rather than rolling them into balls immediately, I'm going to squish it together because it is going to take a couple of minutes for the fat and the water to even out across the dumplings and the oven's not up to temperature yet. Oh, no, it just did, it just clicked. And let's leave those for a couple, just a couple of minutes. So I'm leaving those. The water will be soaking on its way around in there. Let's see how this is doing. I would also advise using oven gloves. I know I'm not going to get burnt by this, but your mileage may vary. Ah, oh, there we go. Pretty much no resistance from the knife. Perfect. So. If I'm not happy with the consistency and the mashing isn't going well enough, then it's just back in the microwave for another minute till it gets right. I put a little bit of milk in the bottom because I wanted sort of milky mashed potato and this can sort of helps with the texture, nice rich flavor and makes it easier to mash. It's going in the oven anyway. I don't want it drying out. All sorts of reasons why there's, there was milk in the microwave in this. And seeing as this is a Pyrex dish, oven proof it doesn't come out of this I microwave the potatoes in this with the lid on and then it goes in the oven with the lid off with a little bit of cheese on top oh that's beautiful see that's really coming along <laughs> okay I think we can, I'm just going to rinse that off a little bit. Everything's going in the oven, so I'm not too worried about it, but I don't want to mix the flavors up. Scrape off the front of that, and let's, there's still some hard bits in here. It's a little bit rustic, but it's what you like in a bit of mashed potato. Unless you want to have something that resembles smash, you want it to have a tiny bit of texture. Just, uh, yeah, some of these aren't 100% done. So, it's going back in the microwave. There's too many hard bits in here. Okay, it's about 90% there. Let's get that back in the microwave. Right, keep the... Uh, Keep that out. Pop those two there because I'm going to need them again. Back in the microwave. Two more minutes. While that's doing, let's get the dumplings done. See, it's all coalesced a bit better now. Evened itself out. Some people, um, I've seen advice to leave dumplings in a fridge overnight just to make sure they even out. I don't think, I think longer is better, but you can also do what I'm about to do and just knead them into shape. And this will even out. As you can see, I got, I got the proportions just about perfect. This is exactly what you want for a dumpling, for consistency. I mean, you could use self-raising flour, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna make that much difference. It's being steamed. It's going to make a little bit of difference, but it's not enough that you'd really care. This is still going to fluff up quite a bit. Right. Let's get this bowl out of the way. Bring back the knife. Six or eight small dumplings. Probably going to be able to do more than that. Some of these larger ones can be cut in two again. They're going to be 30 minutes in the oven steaming inside there, so they'll work quite well.
<laughs> Guess you can kind of call this a food hack. I said I will need to put some additional water in because they're, they're otherwise they're going to absorb a lot of the water. So that's seven in that one. That one's too big. They're only going to cook for half an hour. I want to make sure their size is pretty small. They're going to steam, but I don't think they're going to be steaming the whole time. I only think they're going to be steaming for like probably after it's warmed up in there. The last 20 minutes of the 30 minutes cooking time. I think 10 minutes is going to take longer than that maybe to bring it to the boil. I might have even extended the cooking time a little bit by doing this. Uh, so we got seven in each. Cut that one in half. <clears throat> there we go. And now a tiny bit of water for each. <laughs> so 75 milliliters in here, so I'm just going to pour it on the top. That's about enough. That's what I want. That's just going to help the dumpling steam. Everything else go according to plan. I, because I added an additional ingredient, I'm also going to have to extend the cooking time probably. And the way I'm going to monitor that is I'm going to want the inside of that to reach a certain temperature. And that's going to be relatively easy to monitor. I can just stick the temperature probe through the foil into the liquid once it's cooking. I maybe gone a bit over the top with the amount of foil on that one. Let's go for the next one. <laughs> Half of that foil would have done. Alright. I guess into the oven with these two and let's see what they look like well it's gonna be a while before you see them but well before I see them it's gonna be two minutes before you do oh baking tray um no not that baking tray Too small. Just right. There you go. Put them both in here. And then pop them both in the oven. And because of the dumplings, I'm gonna extend the cooking time by ooh, let's give it five minutes to begin with and then see I can I can have a look what they look like. Alexa, start timer, 35 minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Starting now. And yes, I've just trolled everybody who's got an Alexa around you. <laughs> okay, now let's have a look. Well, has the mashed potato improved consistency at all? Oh yeah, much better. With only two more minutes, but that's already starting to... Right. Mm -hmm. Oh well, rest of that's going in there. Let's mix that in. Grate a little bit of cheese on top and then that goes in the oven too. Not exactly the healthiest meal, but oh boy does that smell good with that clover in. Yummy, 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 yummy. There we go. Actually, you know what? I think we can get away without the cheese on top of this one. Consistency is nice and creamy. It's got a fair bit of fat in it. Might just season the top and
Mm, place some oil on top, maybe. I don't know, there might be enough butter in there. That might work out all right on its own. I don't know. There's no harm in the little bit of cheese. Just adds a bit of something extra and interesting to the top. try and use one of these things bits fall off they might as well go straight onto there they're going everywhere there we go that's all I wanted just a sprinkling the idea isn't to make a, a very cheesy mashed potato it's just to give it a nice crust for it to cook There's plenty of salt in the clover that I put on. Uh, it's, not an un, it's not an unsalty uh, topping, so I'm not going to pop any more salt on. What I might do is a tiny bit of pepper. Bring out the flavour of the cheese and the toast. That's now going in the oven as well. Yeah, it's just hot. Mm, quite toasty. Let's have one quick look at it all in the oven. There it is, all in the oven, and we'll see that in 30 minutes. Right, wow, this is turning out to be a very long video. Please bear with it, it's gonna be amazing when it's done. Okay, here we go, it's ready. Well, cool, the alarm's gone off from Alexa, but uh, let's find out what's actually going on. Right, first start. Oh, there's the mashed potato. That's looking cool, got a little crust on it, exactly as I wanted. I can hear a lot of bubbling away going from inside there. Let's stick a probe in and see what temperature we've got. We're looking for anything over 80 really. The bubbling tells me I'm probably well above that, but I just want to see what I get. Okay, we're good, 96 degrees centigrade. Should be perfect. No cat, nothing for you here. And this is all really hot. Right. So let's have a quick look at what we've got going on inside these. We should have some slightly bigger fluffy dumplings. Uh, but I want to preserve the foil. So I can put them back. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Dumplings have come up nice and large, looking amazing. Ah, there we go. How about that? Yep. Ooh. Oh, the smell's incredible. Mm -mm -mm. Just added an extra five minutes for the dumplings, and that's perfect. Wow. Time to start serving this up. This is what we cooked, and this is what we've come out with. Let's put it on a plate and try it. All right. Let's move the knife up a bit. I can shut down the oven now. Get these moved around a bit. 
Mm, it's always nice to serve up nice food like this. Especially seeing it's a small nice skip breakfast because I got up late. Oh, well, I'm going to have to do those two and then come back for the third one. Let's get myself a serving spoon and a spoon for the mashed potato. Right, might need something smaller just to hold on to things. These little um, these little things are quite handy. Yeah. Oh, the mashed potato smells wonderful. Yeah, there's a small portion of mashed potato. It's for little Max, and then oh, the plates aren't hot, are they? Right. Let's give him three dumplings and some stew. Well, maybe he can have four dumplings and some stew. There we go. And that's what it looks like. Mm -mm -mm. Looks amazing. It is driving the little chicken wild. Luna, no. Okay. Let's try a little bit of it. Mmm, that's amazing. Wow. Mmm. <clears throat> I'm just going to try one of those dumplings and let you know what they taste like. Show you what they look like inside and then serve up the rest and end the video. Mmm. Mmm. Perfect. Cooked all the way through. Mmm. Nice fluffy dumpling. Quite heavy. Mmm. But yummy. Mmm. Maybe could have done a little bit more seasoning in the dumpling, but still really nice. There we go. And there's a portion for my wife. There we go. This is not bad food. This is good food. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video. And wow, that has been really, really yummy to make. And uh, as, a as far as a red wine casserole goes with cheesy mashed potatoes, it looks amazing. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video.